I know a lot of preppers like to participate in the no spend January, which I think is a great idea, a great concept, but I'm not ever going to be able to participate in a challenge where I forego some great deals. In my opinion, January is like one of the best months to really stock up and take advantage of grocery stores that are unloading their holiday inventory and and things like that. So for example, uh, today I am at HEB because they are having a special on their blackberries. Their cartons of blackberries are 77 cents a carton. My daughter Olivia is on a blackberry jelly or blackberry jam kick right now. So instead of going and buying a jar that's probably about $5, I'm just going to make some homemade jelly. Um, but anyway, that's just an example of how you've got to really take advantage of these sales when they happen and and plan your meals around what's on sale so i would like to participate in that no spin january challenge uh where we live off our pantry and our freezer i would be curious to see like how long i can do that without needing to go to the grocery store and how creative i can be if i'm out of an ingredient but i use something else as a substitute so I will be kind of doing my own modification of that challenge, um, but for now I gotta go get me some blackberries. Bada boom, bada bing. Doesn't appear to be a limit. I'm gonna grab about five, I guess. Just kidding. I bought eight cartons for seven dollars and seven cents. And I think Corey bought a few cartons yesterday simply because we weren't sure if there was a limit on how many you could get per day like at Kroger. So turns out no limit. I think we're gonna need more than we think we do to make jam. We've made jam before, or have we? I can't remember, we've made a lot of stuff, but I think it takes more than we think it does, but we'll see, be right back. Before we make the blackberry jelly, I got some tilapia on sale at Aldi. I believe it was half off, we paid $3.50 for it. I'm gonna make some pistachio crusted tilapia with some blackberry compote. So I'm gonna set some of the blackberries aside for this dish tonight and then stick around to the end of the video and we'll make the blackberry jelly together. Take your rinsed blackberries and throw them in a pan set to about medium heat. Then you're gonna Throw a little bit of white wine in. I'm not really going to measure it. I'm just going to give it a splash. These berries are going to be pretty sweet on their own, but I'm going to go ahead and throw a little bit of brown sugar in just to help break it down. I'm also going to throw in some smoked sugar just to give it a little bit of smokiness. Then I'm going to use about a tablespoon of smoked maple syrup. Little dash of onion powder. Little bit of smoked mustard. Can you tell there's a smoked thing going on? Little bit of chopped onion. little bit of granulated garlic. I'm just going to kind of smash this up a little bit. So while I just let this thicken up a little bit, I'm just going to add a little bit of pepper, a little bit of salt, and I'm just going to let it simmer for a few minutes. Now I'm just going to set this aside. Next I'm just going to butter this baking dish. I also want to crush up these pistachios. I'm just going to eyeball it and do about a quarter of a cup. That will work. Next, you're going to want to season your fillets. I'm just going to take a little bit of mayo here 
and then a little Dijon mustard. These are some big fillets. Give it a little mix, a little brush roux. So once you do this on both sides, you want to sprinkle it with some Old Bay. Then I'm going to take my crushed pistachios. I'm not really going to, um, not going to really roll it. I'm just going to kind of pour it on, give it a good smear. Do the same on the other side. I might have said to set your oven for 350, but these are some big fillets. So we cranked it up to 400 and we're going to put it in the oven for 20 minutes. Next, we're going to just make a side of Asian inspired green beans. We're going to put a little bit of oil in a pan. Once it gets hot enough, you just pour the green beans in. I'm going to do some of the usual suspects as far as seasoning. Throw some uh, dehydrated onion, some granulated garlic, some onion powder. Next, we're going to add some of this Japanese barbecue sauce. And we're going to put a little bit of sesame seeds in there. I'm going to throw a couple of tomatoes in there. And then you want to just give it a good little toss. Next, we're just going to cover it and let it cook to our des desired crispiness, tenderness, whatever you want. Tenderness. tenderness. Then you just want to keep turning them, making sure that everything's getting cooked and everything's getting coated. We're adding a little bit more barbecue sauce. I threw a couple more tomatoes in and reduce the heat to simmer. So it's going to make quite a bit of jam. Oh, I don't know how to tell you this, but we have just as many raspberries. I got those on sale this week too. Better you're, get busy. You're going to be busy. Better you're the one busy. that knows how to can in this relationship, yeah. not me. So the stove is a hot mess, but this is all done and ready to plate up. All right, time for the moment of truth. Taste test time. Nice and flaky. And you, we got these at Aldi, like I was saying in the beginning of the video, for what? They were half off, so for these two humongous fish fillets was like three dollars and fifty cents or yeah. something. Mm. The pistachio mm. crust is really good. Mm. There's a little crunch to it. No, yeah, there's all kinds of flavor profiles going on here. And it's kind of like um, I love the whole sweet and savory combo, but it's kind of giving me vibes. This uh, blackberry jelly is kind of giving me vibes of like that lindenberry mm. sauce we got in Germany mm -hmm. on our um, Wiener schnitzels. So, and we, if you could see our floor, we have an audience of all kinds of dogs around us. Uh, what, do you, what do you think of the green beans? Pretty good. Yeah. Mm. So, the green beans are good too. Uh, we got that. Asian barbecue, Japanese barbecue sauce from uh, Costco, mm -hmm. correct? Yep. So anyway, this is good, but now we have the OG fish taste tester that we're going to bring on. Queen Bee is about as picky as they get, but let's see if she'll eat this fish. Is it too hot for you, Bee? Is it too hot? Yeah, she's a fish snob, so don't let her reaction sway you from trying this recipe. It's really, really good. She's just a snob. Y'all have a good one. 
She's a liar. She's just camera shy. She's chowing down on it. Is she? Yep. Uh, Queen Bee, do you just not like to eat while I'm holding you? There you go. Oh, you're standing up for that one. Okay, there you go, girl. BB gives it two paws up. All right, so I rinsed all the blackberries, uh, measured them out, put them in this pan. We're a little over 16 cups of blackberries, so a lot of people do one-to-one -one ratio with sugar. I think we're going to do half that, so not to make it so sweet. So I got to just start mashing these down the best I can. It's going to take a while, but... Is that therapeutic? Uh, not really. Do you wish that was my head? No. Uh, I wish it was you right hand doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so I mash these down. Let's take a look at them. I'll turn the heat on here in a minute, but I'm going to uh, put the sugar in. I need eight cups of sugar. That seems like an awful lot of sugar. But... I thought you were going to reduce it. I did. You reduced it berries. down and it's still eight cups? 16 cups Dad, of gone. I'm glad you're in charge of doing the math on this project. We have never made this before, but it seems like that's a heck of a lot of sugar. I know everybody does one-to-one, -one, but we're going to try something different. I did like six, almost seven cups of sugar. I'm going to try that. And then I got a half a lemon, and I want you to squeeze that lemon in there too. Oh, there's a seed. I think all the <laughs> seeds out. All right, so I got it in there. Turn the heat on, medium high. We're gonna let it bring to a boil, and we'll go come back and show you different phases of it. Okay. I just kind of stuck my finger in there a little bit to see if the sugar ratio was right. It seems to be right for for us. The sugar hasn't dissolved yet either. It hasn't gotten nearly hot enough. So as it as it dissolves and the berries cook down, we'll give it another taste test i guess but we're gonna be fine on this one it's like it's gonna make about six or eight pint sized jars of jam so i'll need to go get my jars and get them in the oven i used to do my jars at 250 degrees for about 10 or 15 minutes to sanitize them so what kind of canning is this is this water bath canning or what you <coughs> yeah, call it yeah it's gonna be water bath canning water bath canning okay not pressure canning. but that's not what today's video is about right we're not, <coughs> no. not going to show how to do that we're just making the blackberry jam and then i'll fill i'll can it later tonight sounds like a plan okay this has been cooking about 20 minutes and you can see it's starting to foam up so a lot of people just put a dab of butter in there Move it around. I lost my butter, but it's in there somewhere. But the butter will reduce the foam. There's no harm in canning it with a little bit of butter in it, too. Because people say you can't can dairy, but we've canned cheese and stuff before, so I'm not worried about it. So. Alright, so I put this little plate in the freezer. And when we're going to test this, we're going to let this set up for a few minutes. And then we're going to see if it's congealed where I can just like rub my finger through it and it stays separated or you know it feels like it's ready to go so. So you did not have to use what's it called pick how do you say yes, it it's that no gelatin no, no pectin, pectin just fruit and sugar and lemon huh. juice. Okay all right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right so you just run your finger through it. Well, it's not liquidy, right? So it doesn't run back together. So, tastes really good. Well, we did a little bit there, but we'll maybe get another five minutes, but I think this is done. All right, so like I said, I'll let it go for another few more minutes. I'm pretty sure it's done. Uh, it's got good flavor, plenty sweet enough. I would never do a one-to-one -one ratio. I know a lot of people just put this in old jelly jars or canning jars, whatever, and then uh, some people put it in a canning jar and turn the canning jar upside down. It does a seal. We're going to go ahead and do a water bath. 
I'm sure, pretty sure all of you know what a water bath is. So we'll just so we'll put these in pint-sized jars and give them about a 10-minute water bath, and they should be good to go. So anyway, so just whatever jars you want to use or whatever containers, it depends really on the batch. I mean, we didn't really anticipate having this many blackberries, but Kelly and I were both going to the store when they were on sale. So <laughs> we ended up with We that, were so. tag-teaming it. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> anyway, guys, so it's a very, very easy recipe. Basically, three ingredients, lemon, blackberry, sugar, cook it for 30 minutes, and you're good to go.